you remember the little dirt devil handy that we got from the car boot on gosh what's been the only time i've been so far this year and i said in the video where we first looked at it although i spent more time on the more exciting hoover enigma that we might strip it down together well i have a blank screw card i have an empty pot. Shortly I shall fetch a screwdriver. Let us take this apart step by step. You Americans can see what's in a 240 volt version of your vacuum and those of you who are interested in repairing one of these may learn something as well. Might even work better afterwards too. That would be nice wouldn't it? Let's have a look. Yes, hello, my vacuum cleaner and little red dirt devil chums. How are you today? Oh, right, let us remind ourselves of how it works now. She tries, bless her, she's screaming. If we take the belt off, It's not horrendous, oh yeah, they probably go on for years and years like that, but it's certainly not going to be fabulous for it either. So, let's start by removing, well, start by unplugging it first, that is key, then we shall remove the bag, which we'll just pull off on this generation, there is no clamp, it's just pushed onto there like so. The inner bag is now fit for the bin, we'll have to get some more of those. And this, it, it may go through the washing machine. It should survive, I probably will. But first, we'll get a good rinse off, because yeah, it's got years of badly fitted paper bags fitted onto it. And look at the state of it. That'll clean up quite well though. And, you know, all, all of a sudden, we are down to not a great deal here. And we can start with our first two screws. Reasonably simple stuff this, it's a reasonably simple vacuum cleaner. We just need to remove the two screws holding on the base plate. Oh, what idiot's been here before this one's... Oh, I hope it's not cross-threaded. Did we do that? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh -oh, uh-oh. Struggling here, oh dear. I don't know whether we cross-threaded it in the before video if a bit of grit just got in there, but yeah, that wasn't too happy. But never mind, it's off now and we can reveal our base plate. I'm not going to do too much with that rust. I'll just wash the whole thing and that will be that. Bush roll will come out very easily now. We don't need a belt. That belt is perfectly serviceable. With the brush roll, we can take the end caps off. They will just pull off and if you're lucky, the in a bit there will come off with them. What we can do now is get some pliers and pull that out of here. You might need to sort of help it with something else so you don't hurt yourself. And this is what they look like. That's the outer part. This locks in. There is a plasticky retaining washer there. Then this felt ring and then you will pull off the dirt be able to so it's very gummed up there we go pull off the axle from the brush roll that will help it rotate a lot better this side stayed in so we can gently oh, gently pry it out so I've just but that washer, that was very silly, but probably not catastrophic, I'll be honest. Sometimes you don't have these. Ah, there we go. Plastic part off, felt pad out, and then that axle just slides out. And as quick as that, that is the entire brush roll assembly stripped down. And we're not going to wash any of that. But we will wash those. And well, now we are down to here where we can remove these seven screws holding the body on. We 
with that sorted, we should now be able to pull this apart that way. And here we can see our vacuum, and hey, it's not the worst I've seen immediately. There is our dry little motor. Here is this side of it, as you can see, the fluff is building up in places, but that can all be fixed with a good wash. And yeah, this is where you want to scrape away all of the detritus. What we can also now get to are these two screws either side of here, which hold in those retaining threads for the base plate. There we go. That will be washed because I'll flush it out, get all the grit out, and then a good old dry. We'll see it good. There's one of those on either side. But what we'll do first is, well, I'll wire everything. There's a nice picture that you can pause on before everything just gets pulled out, all the loom, and, ah yes, not the motor. Have to undo two of the screws, I think. Or at least one, because they screw through into the actual vacuum. Yeah, one there, and then one down here. Oh, and here, so three of them. Oh, it's been a little while since I've done a Dirt Devil Handy. Are you following along, along at home? Obviously, don't do this live. It will be awful for you. Oh, there we go. And then the motor, the fan shroud thing, will come out of there. As to, will this, which literally just slides in there. So, remove that. I'm going to unwire the cables. I'm just going to unplug the live and then I shall unscrew the neutral from the chocolate block, and then we're ready to look at the motor itself. Now the reason I can tell this isn't the worst I've ever seen is the dirt build-up on the fan case isn't that bad. I've known them crack the plastic housing before when they've been really used. This just has a normal amount of, you know, decades worth of gummed up fluff, really. There we go. It all comes off and that can be washed as well. This is what we're fighting. This is what makes them run not very happy because it all pushes stuff out of the way. Now, I think I am right in assuming that we can just undo the other screws that hold the motor together and get at everything from the back so we can hold the armature to remove the fan because that's always the easy way to do it. We also have a back fan as well which will need to come off too so we'll take out the three remaining screws and then the housing should just separate like so although it's caught on something I don't want you to be caught on anything thank you very much ah, it's, it's trying to come but we can now hold the armature inside we'll unscrew this by hand we'll take the fan off and ah yes i did slightly forget about this look at that there is a nice felt seal on there which you have to take one side or the other off in fact that's in such good condition i'm going to take it all off and we can just glue it back on afterwards now the fan case will come off fan is in pretty good order it doesn't seem cracked it doesn't seem too worn out there's you know something i don't know if that's on purpose or if that's just a very nice chip taken out of it but yeah it's not cracked it's not broken that is fine as well oh we can now see there is look all of the hair that goes around here oh are you just going to pull off off nicely enough yes you are with our white plastic space apart that goes below the fan. God, this suddenly works quite a bit better. Now, there we go. The back fan just pulls off from there. And now we can take all of this apart and uh, we'll start with the carbon brushes, which are quite simple. Just pop that little metal tab there and the spring comes off and the brush comes out and look, excellent life on those carbon brushes so that's very nice we'll do the same with this side pop take that off there was no spring oh there it was it fell off there we go so the carbon holders are out 
we can now take off this side of the mount. And actually, before we do that, I'm going to take myself a photograph because I always get this bit wrong. And obviously, I'm going to be doing it on camera in a bit. So, with that carbon brush pointing upwards with the live side, because this is a handed bit of metal, if you get it wrong, you suddenly can't put the rear housing back together. And that'll be silly, won't it? Oh, so, we'll take out this last screw here, which takes that bracket off. Then we can take off the longer screws which go all the way through the coil. The problem with these little vacuums is that they always just get stored in the damp or chucked in the shed or up in the loft and that's what does the damage. That's why, you know, this thing has a little bit of rust on it but isn't too bad. And with those coil screws removed, we should be able to just pull the armature from the coil. So there is our field coil, very grim. We'll give that a fair wipe down. We're not gonna completely scrub it to death. Then, are you gonna come off nicely? Oh, I don't think I'm gonna bother trying to take that off because it's welded on there. We can drop a lot of oil in there. We'll just give that a brush off. I, I, I just won't wash the carbon holders unless it comes off after filming this shot. But crikey, there we go then. That is all that is needed to take our five pound odd Dirt Devil handy zip apart. Next thing to do is to wash it. A few days later in my world, we have clean, not shiny, but clean, tidy, ready to reassemble. Although we won't need those bits straight away, because obviously we've got to start with the motor. So we'll move some bits out of the way. That's brush roll. Oh, we'll need that. That is the motor spindle. In theory, this is roughly how it all needs to go together. We need to take our armature and its thing and pop it into place. We'll oil it from the top in a minute before we put everything else back on and then this chap here oh i'll be very careful of the wires because i don't want to break any wires today needs to go on there with these two coil screws popped back into place then with the coil flipped around the right way because of course these need to correspond with the carbon brushes God, you did nearly let me forget that didn't you we can take a little drop of oil and put some into the top oh come on with that low on oil there we go put a nice bit in there so it soaks into the little felt pad it'll be in there just a little drip in the bottom this is a sleeved bearing i know some people don't like me doing this but it's not gonna hurt it's just a cheap little vacuum and then i just tap the ends until you get it spinning as freely as you can and that's about as good as it's going to get. So the next thing that I need to do is to figure out this carbon brush wiring. I don't remember putting out two bits of metal, but I think one goes in there, then the carbon brush locks it into place. I don't know actually. No, that can't be right. Oh, I didn't notice we ever took that part out. Carbon brush goes in there. Oh. Um, so yeah, I'm going to figure where the heck they came from and get that top it up. And this is where the benefit of recording or taking photos of everything comes into play. I've loosened these screws. It literally, those two tabs just slot in there. So yeah, I can hold it quite nicely with my fingers and get the screwdriver and just tweak it back up like so. Not too much. Oh, there we go. Oh, in fact... That's how we can tweak how much the motor spins. Maybe I had the screws tracked down too much last time. Oh yeah, look at that. That's gonna do it. One nicely spinning motor. Right, carbon brushes. Then we need to put this part back on. Then these bits back on. Like roughly so, yeah, that lines up there with the screw holes. And I think actually, no, wait, before we do that, we'll put the fan on because then we can tweak it down before we can't. And that should be as simple as putting this spacer piece on, popping the fan on, then getting the belt spindle itself, screwing that on counterclockwise. Oh. And then 
hold it with my finger really and just give it a good tweak down and that's all it should need because it spins the other way it'll tighten itself down as the machine is going right i still haven't done those carbon brushes i keep on getting distracted we put this on the flipping wrong way round. that was very stupid of me and i think it goes on that way round. And then I need to line up the casing, remember where the wires came from, because I think there's a channel that I have to push all these on. And then we can get the three screws in. And with two steps back, one step forward, I have the motor in its casing. But with the fan off, because, and I always forget this, I'm sure there was one machine that I had it back together and I realised that I hadn't put that seal on. And you know what, then I always try and push that on. It's probably going to need a little drop of Q-Bond just to stay on there. Sometimes the adhesive is still good enough, but on this one, not so much. So I'm going to put that on, get the fan back on, get this rear fan on and then we should be ready to start chucking it back into the machine itself Now I'll just go remember which flipping side of this was the master. I think it was this side actually because it's got all the little cable grooves and glides that it needs to go in. But first, before we forget, because again, I've done this before, we should probably screw these little chaps in. Because if you're only in there and you get all of this nicely back together and then remember that you don't have this on, you can't fit the base plate and obviously can't fit the base plate. We cannot finish the job so i'll put that one in i'll put the other one in in a second oh, I need to pop this sorted back onto there slide it in okay and check that nothing's rubbing this is what makes a slightly weird noise on my broomy this all flexes a bit and the fan touches despite my best efforts touches well by some efforts touches the metal work of there so yeah that's a little bit annoying we'll do that in well, actually now I think, because the time we put that on, we then just got to put the other cover on. Yes, the flex does need to go on now. Ugh. Which I guess shouldn't be too difficult because it goes in there, comes through there. You can sort of line up the old grooves. Obviously the chocolate block sits there. There we go. So this will go through there like that. Obviously the switch goes there and actually I think I pulled these too far forwards that will obviously go there the switch will go there yes very nice oh poop oh no okay this is where we have some problems I put this together wrong and because I put it together wrong oh no the Neutral cable isn't long enough. It's obviously going the wrong way around in there. So guess what I now have to do again? Oh, yes, that's right. As I'm holding it, it's going to be this way around. The live will go under once. The neutral will come straight out. I can't take this off now because I glued it on. But there's our little notch. So all I have to do is just open this slightly, feed this back through, Line those cables up. Oh my goodness, do I have to flip this bracket round now? Oh no, I don't think this is quite this easy, although it should be, yeah. Oh, I've now got that bracket 90 degrees. Hold on. Once everything lines up, reaches, connects, that switch will hopefully have to be fiddled in when we put the casing on. We can stick the three long screws back into the motor and in theory it will not rub and oh, this screw is so long I should have got the drill out and there we are just snug the motor still spins without rubbing and touching on anything we can put the front cover sort of in but not on I fitted the other side to this 
we should be able now to bring the two bits together. The cable has to be pushed in, as does the switch. Perhaps it might almost be easier to, oh no, yeah, to leave the switch out and push it in afterwards. But that's it. That's done. Don't let go of it. Put all of the housing screws back in very quickly. At least chuck a few on the go. With the main machine looking a bit more vacuum cleanery, it's time we look at the brush roll. And we'll start with just a mandatory little drip of oil into the, well, I guess brush roll spindles themselves. That one's already fitted because I put a little burr on it, so I had to put it in with a hammer. This one slides in nicely, and they're recessed as well. So they go in that way. Then it was, oh, that one's pretty scrap, isn't it? Then it's this, and then we just have to push them in, really. We get one side ah, done-ish. Then we can, oh, I think put a drop of oil in you, have we? Yeah, and when you're making a noise. It should be smooth and quiet when we're done. <laughs> there we go. The second one in. Push it down. And that's pretty much it, really. That's all the little brush rod does. It just runs on these inside of their bearing, although it's actually not fully in. You don't want it to be completely tight, really. You want it about as loose as you can get away with because obviously you then have these end caps which go on somehow oh blimey ah but again i think they just sit like oh you see that that little felt pad has come off of there well you'll live that side then you'll live that side and you'll probably live happily ever after especially when we put the belt on and we spin you up and you find your own center because that's what it'll do really oh yeah no look we do need to perhaps do a little bit of tapping around because yeah that's too wide that's better that will drop in there and then you'll notice that the housing is still a little bit cheap and plastic and it's always going to stay that way but it's mostly loose because the base plate forms the final piece that holds it together and dang it I forgot about this stripped out screw are you going to go in nicely with a proper big boy screwdriver let us hope so I'll get these done up and the belt put on and then we must be ready for a test I've already got it plugged in I've got the hammer ready in case it needs it That is, that's lovely. Keeping my hands away from the on switch. Don't do this at home, children. Did I put that on the right way or the wrong way? I never know. The wrong way. Still the wrong way. Oh, blimey. Ah, I can't bend my thumb that way. Ooh, what the heck? Oh, Whoa, we're cooking now, and of course I've managed to get oily fingerprints all over it, so we'll give it a wipe down and rub it in. And then, well, we can, we can bash the bag on this. I think we'll put it this way round, with the zip coming in on the bottom, and the Dirt Devil logo's... The right way round. Oh, ready for the inflation. Oh. Yeah! But of course it's not quite ready to see some dirt yet. Because as much as I'm, I'm sure these were bagless at one point, this one I don't think is because the bag is thinner. 
and I don't have any Dirt Devil handy bag. I don't want to spend any money on this. I sort of regretted buying it anyway. So I went through the old stash and found these Goblin Iota bags with somebody's flipping mobile number on it, as I just saw there. I look at them. They're pretty diddy. They're um, jewel layered, I think, which is probably better than this would have had when new. And would you know it, it fits on there fine. Absolutely no problem at all. And then, because you can zip the outer bag over, you can sort of stuff it on like that, pull the zip, wherever it may be, back on itself, and that's going to be absolutely fine. It hasn't fallen off. No, we're all good. Ah, ha, ha. That's really good. Let's give it a go on the rug. not bad at all so yeah i would i would perhaps set this as a pretty good benchmark if you're dirt devil handy <laughs> you've probably got a good one and are gonna be okay if your dirt devil handy did not sound like that then hopefully if you follow this video it perhaps will once more and if you need bags god be nice the bags fit but crikey the paper bags are cheap enough i'm just not buying a whole pack just for this one video but i said that we would refurbish it together and refurbish it together we have i also realized that i've now got a matching pair haven't i yeah, I've got an enviable 1990s pair of You probably could have had the pair of these for under 70 quid if you were buying them in the right place. And I'll be honest, if I didn't have laminate flooring and just had carpet, this would do me completely. Because obviously I've, I've used this for an entire month. It is pretty good. It is more worn than this. But, you know, you can see the family resemblance, the belts off of the broomie, so it doesn't stretch. I'll take the belts off of this when I'm done playing with it. Yeah, they are literally pretty much exactly the same, just scaled up, and the motor is the same as well, although obviously on my broomie, it is a little bit more warm. But, yeah, that is the dirty devil of the 90s. It's always a shame it doesn't hook on, isn't it? I, mean, I could probably make it stand up. No, I don't think we're even going to get some sort of weird thing for the aftershock. But there we go. I, I, I have a 90s Dirt Devil pair. That's pretty cool, isn't it? What do you think? I presume a lot of you had a Dirt Devil handy. Let me know down below what you think of it. And for those broomy people amongst you, do you have one? And if so, do you like it, really? And yeah, until the next time I buy something stupid or rescue something from Tayab, I and some other delicious dirty devil or other vacuum cleaner will see you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>